All right. Well, welcome to the Young Lawyer Podcast. Um, glad to have you on today. I guess, firstly, um, let's dive into your journey into the legal profession so far. Well, mate, I, um, I, kept, I was one of those guys who went straight from school, didn't know if I was going to be a lawyer or a psychologist, ended up doing seven years of uni, did a psych degree, did a commerce, commerce degree, did a law degree, and then picked, just fell into law, really. It was funny. I just sort of, I was out, I fell into PI, personal injuries, actually, because just out trying to find a job, as you're saying, it wasn't the easiest when, uh, you know, you apply to 50 different firms and they all knock you back when you're at uni. So anyway, a firm of, that used to be called Trilby Misso, um, they picked me up, took me on and uh, mate, my journey started there and I was there with a few, for a few years, learned a lot of good stuff um, with, the, with the team there and then um, ventured and started a personal injury firm within a commercial firm. Um, and when I was with my old partnership, you know, we, when I started there, there was, oh shit, there was probably about four people. And then when I left, it was about 85. So we built that firm up. We turned it over 20 million a year. Um, did really well. You know, it was a good, good, good business. Was there 10 years. But like, you know, like the old saying goes, all partnerships are meant to be dissolved. So, so we, uh, so we all went our separate ways. Um, and then I just, Mate, I, I really, I just really wanted to start my own thing. You know what I mean? I didn't want to, I didn't want to have commercial or family or criminal or anything else. I just wanted PI and do what I was really good at. And Kemp Law has been around seven years now. We're, um, we're one of the highest turnover PI, smaller PI firms in, in, uh, in Queensland. And mate, we're going to venture out and do some big things in 2021. So it's looking forward to it. Yeah, well, that sounds very interesting. Um, I'll touch on the business side soon because I've obviously read a few um, articles about the turnovers and whatnot and so I'd really love to pick your brain about just the business side of things. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I guess out of the three degrees you ended up doing, how was it, um, what attracted you to law the most, I guess? Mate, it was, look, to be honest, um, I guess being a lawyer, people have different strengths. Like I would, ne- I'd be a shocking commercial lawyer. <laughs> you know what I mean? I, I, there's, I just, I wouldn't be good at it. And I've got some really good, commercial lawyers who I use each and every day um, for different things for whether it be personal business, you know, um, my wife's businesses, you know, all that sort of stuff. So, and I just know it's not me. So when I was falling into PI, I thought it's one of those businesses where you get to help people. Um, You know, I know there's the, there's the stigma of being an ambulance chaser and all that sort of stuff. It comes with, you know, what we do, but there's a lot of money in the back of the ambulances. That's a simple fact. There's a lot of money in them. And I've made a very, very, very comfortable life for myself over the past 20 years of doing it. And I still enjoy it. You know I mean? I still enjoy doing it, but I fell into it simply for the fact that I was a really good people person. Okay. Um, and I didn't talk shit and I didn't lie. So the one thing you can't do with personal injuries is you can't lie to your clients. Yeah. Like you can't yeah. tell them that they're going to win their case when they're not. You know what I mean? You're held very accountable. So I enjoyed that personal side of things where I said, look, I could come in, change your life, get you a lot of money, help you, you know, I'll never be able to make you retire, but I'll be able to help you get on another, another um, avenue or another road to where you can, you can, you know, you, you've had a shocking injury, your life's never going to be the same, but let's try and change that and help you find a better, a better direction. Because there's a lot of people when they've had, you know, if you have an amputation injury or a paraplegic or a brain injury, people lose all hope. You know, they, they sort of, and then they turn to a lawyer and go, well, number one, I hope he doesn't rip me off. Number two, I hope he knows what he's doing and gets me the right amount. But you've also got to help him. And a lot of my clients, mate, a lot of my clients from 10, 15 years ago who were paraplegics or just really quadriplegic, really bad injuries, are still friends and still close to them. I still check on them because you, you find a, a goal for them. And that's what was the biggest thing was what I chose with PI as I knew that I could help people and really just, you know, just help change their outlook on life. Because, you know, when you have a... When you have a catastrophic injury, you your your you people turn to wanting to kill themselves and and you know really really bad mental state. And I've walked into hospitals, mate, and I've sat there and cried with them because I felt that I was like, you know, we need to, to find a way to help you. You know what I mean? And and sometimes sometimes the accident's half their fault. You know, what I mean, it's not always someone else's fault, but you know, half of nothing's. Half of something's going to be better than half of nothing. So we, you know, we're there to help. That's the main thing. 
Yeah, well, that's um, very interesting. Um, and when you say you fell into it, was it just like through working, you slowly adapted to going, oh, you know, yeah. I'm enjoy this? Yeah, okay. Mate, when I, when I'd, I'd applied to, I don't want to name the firms, but I applied to like, a, say, 50 firms. And this is back when you used to have to type your resume, you'd send your resume, you'd type it up on a typewriter. and Or, you know, <laughs> it, we did have electronic typewriters then. And I think I uh, was a couple of years and I got an Apple later, but it was, um, you'd, and I sent out, say, 50 or 100 resumes. And you get a few calls back, but most people would throw it away. And then when Trilby's asked me, and Trilby Misso himself, which was, he was a very, very lovely man. Um, God bless his soul. Um, you know, I got, came in and, and I had that interview and I was like, what's personal injuries? Let's, you know, and I was like, oh, torts, all right, okay, let's give this a crack. And mate, then I just, and that was it. I just, I really enjoyed it. I, the law is, personal injuries law is like any law, but it's the highest, um, um, without swearing stuff up rate, you know, behind conveyancing because lawyers try to do PI and they stuff it up. They miss limitations. They don't do it right behind conveyancing. So the next biggest leg side insurance claim for, you know, ins for any claim where, so it's, it's not as easy as it, as it looks. So that's why, I, and when I got into it, I was like, oh, you know, this is, it's quite hard. And so when I say I fell into it, it was purely because they gave me a crack to, to come and work with them. And I was a shit kicker. I was out there signing clients up. I was on the road all hours of night seeing clients. I was, but I was working seven days a week for them. But it was really good. It was really good for, for learning that you got to put in the hard yards in the early days. And that's how I fell into it. And then that was it from there. I just grew on my ability to make people really like me. Clients really trust me and get really good results and big results. And then that and it just snowball, like any snowball, it catches up speed and it grows and grows and grows, catches momentum. And then we, uh, away from there, we went. Yeah, well, that's, that's um, one thing I've really noticed is that you know, there's not many generalist firms anymore. So do you feel like with the specific niche that you got into it so early, that kind of helped, you know, your trajectory as to where you are now? Kind of? yeah. yeah, look, you know, you, you see a lot of suburban firms and they'll sort of do a little bit of everything. Um, and that might be for certain people, but it's, I think if you're going to do something, do one thing and do it really, really well. Yep. You know, I mean, I know there's commercial firms out there that try to compete with me that, that have just no idea. They just dabble in PI because they see how well, say, for example, I do. And then they go, oh, we could do that. That'd be easy. And then they realize and they get it and they go, yeah, you know, you can't run a thousand files and have you know and be over all of it and still try to be a peer and still try to do commercial and family and everything out they just try to dabble because they see the money and it's not easy money either that's the thing with pi people think you know because at least with commercial family law anyone lawyers always go well look yep mate i'll definitely do your divorce but i'm gonna need 20 in trust so it's just you know where pi when i first started kemp law mate i had like say five clients and no, and had no money coming in because those five clients weren't going to generate any money for 12 months. Then I got the 50 clients and those five clients might've settled, but then you get, then you still got no money for another 12 months. So it's, it takes that time and we're seven years into it now and it's, you know, it's very lucrative now, but at that time it's, it's really hard yards and no one understands that where commercial lawyers, family lawyers, criminal lawyers, people don't, no one goes to court, especially for crims, unless they got money and trust. So those guys are, you know, those guys are, are, are a little bit luckier than we are. You know, they get the money up front. Yeah. In saying that, I was reading one of the Courier Mail articles about the business. Um, you quadrupled your turnover in three years. Um, you know, you used yeah. disbursement funding. And I was just a bit curious about, you know, what that is exactly. So disbursement funding, it was good. We don't use it anymore because we're self-funded now. But when I first started... You think about it, say for example, you have a hundred clients and a hundred clients need a hundred medical reports and every medical report is 4,400 bucks. You've got to fund that yourself. So if you can't, and if you're spending money, so like I do billboards, Nova TV, channel nine, got great relationships with all of them, but I was spending a fortune on trying to market myself also, to, and then also pay for the firm. You find that you just simply can't do it um, because you can't, there's just not enough money. You don't have enough money. Like, no matter what you do, doesn't matter how much money you make, you still, there's never enough money to spend a couple hundred grand on marketing. Then go, well, shit, I need a million dollars for outlays. You just can't do it. 
So for me, outlay funding was phenomenal for the first few years of the firm. Um, then we switched, when we got enough money, we went, well, we don't need that. We might as well do it ourselves, save the clients more money on interest and get us a better result. Where, you know, if we settle a claim and say our fees are <clears throat> 50 grand and the outlays are 10 grand, we get the 10 grand back. You know, it's not 10, it's not 10 grand, it's turned into 15 grand that the client loses five grand in interest. And then that 15 grand just goes to a, you know, to a, uh, a litigation lender. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. Yeah, I was just yeah, very yeah. curious about that. Um, so I guess the other thing I have about the whole business side of things is, um, what is it about the small firm that I guess you wanted to make an impact with compared to you know, the big firms kind of thing? Oh, it's, it's, look, little firms, like we're, we're a small firm, but we probably, we probably have, if not more files than a lot of the big or the big firms, simply for the fact that they've got massive engines, you know, they're running HR departments. Um, you know, they have, they have whole divisions dedicated to them defending claims or being sued by clients, LSC complaints. Um, you know, they have all these things that are paying for non fee earners that are costing money. So when a client settles a claim, what he's doing is he's really just paying for all these things that he, that he's not really involved in. And that's, that's where, you know, the 50, 50 rule comes into place with PI. So for us, we don't have to even generate anywhere near 50, 50 when we're settling a claim, you know, if a client gets a hundred grand, we're not taking 50%. We, we have the ability not to charge them as much money. <clears throat> and the benefit of that is I will get four, five, 10 referrals from that guy over the next 12, two years. So I'll make more money off just charging what it's cost us to run the claim very lean and make 10 times the money because he's referred me 10 times, 10 clients. And I find that more and more now they'll go, you know, go and see Kempy, go see Kemp Law because, you know, they'll look after you and they're not going to you on the fees. And that's what we're finding now. It's just the big firms and not disparaging. I know a lot of big boys, I know a lot of the owners of the big firms and they're great guys, but they've got big businesses big engines are run. It costs a lot of money to run those big firms where for us, we're just trying to keep it nice and light, lean, run a lot of files, but with really smart, good lawyers who know how to run them lean and get the clients the most money at the least amount of charge. So, you know, I mean, and I've always been a big fan of that. There's no point, you know, raping and pillaging every client because you'll never get another client back from them. Yeah. That's, yeah, that's very yeah. true. And word of um, mouth is one of the biggest things, you know, referrals is the big, we live by referrals. 50% of our clients are referrals. That's yeah. Well, that's actually actually pretty interesting here with way, um, I guess internet's moving. Everyone's moving towards like an online approach to hear that the word of mouth is still so prominent in today's. Um, so yeah, like, but you, I use both of them. See, I, I'm heavily, I come heavy on the social media, heavy on the, that sort of side of things, but from a personal connection as well, we're not just a generic, firm who just pumps out shitty little Facebook ads so it annoys you every time or, you know, ads on TV and stuff like that. We're very personal. So people will hit us slide in the DMs, go, look, I had an accident. Can you help me? We Sometimes we can't, sometimes we can. But I always personally respond to all of them. And if I can, I still get out and see 80% of clients if I can as well. Yeah. I guess that's one of the best things I've seen on LinkedIn is obviously you know, you guys just taking photos of just going to court, having you know, coffee or whatever it is, is I guess it makes us um, more approachable to, I guess, other people, yeah. colleagues and clients, which is really good and to I, see. I don't know how other, like other big firms do it, but you know, I know if I was a client, if I was a tradie who just say, say I cut my fingers off and then, and then I, I, I rang a law firm and they just sent me, you know, six inches of paperwork to sign. I'm not, I'm not going to read all that. I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to put that in the side and go, well, I might call someone who actually pop out and see me, have a coffee with me, explain what I'm going to do. Explain if no win, no fee is really no win, no fee. If I'm not, you know, I'm going to lose my house if I lose this. Yeah. And have that thing. And that's, and that's how it works. I think there's a lot of clients that I'll go and see that probably wouldn't have sued um, had they, like, because, you know, unless the employer sacked them or, you know, they were in excruciate, like they, people don't normally want to sue. That's the good thing about Australia. We're not a country like America and we don't force people to sue. Like people, people might ring us and go, mate, I hurt myself at work. I want to sue. I go, yeah, mate. And he goes, oh, look, I don't want to, I don't want to do it now. I want to talk to the employer. Employer gives him the ass, says, mate, you're no good to me anymore. Then he'll come back. 
we don't force people to do things because it's just going to put their own job and their own income and their family in jeopardy. What for the sake of a claim and, you know, for the sake of us making some money, it's not worth it because then they'll end up hating us because we're the ones that have made them sue and made them get the sack or make the employer hate them and make all the people at work talk about them. So. Yeah, that's the one thing. Eh? Um, you've got to be very client focused to get some end results. Yeah. Um, I guess with either the business side of it or just, um, through general study, what's some setbacks you've faced and had to deal with? <laughs> oh, mate, you, like, <laughs> that's the best thing about business. Business, it's hard no matter what you do. No matter how much you mon money you make, there's always bills. There's always setbacks. There's always people that, people that just don't want to see you be successful. That's the unfortunate thing. I came from an old partnership where um, <clears throat> they probably tried everything to bury me at the end of the partnership because of the success I had with them. And they just didn't want me to repeat that. Um, luckily for me, I'm obviously very good at what I do. I repeated it tenfold, but those sort of setbacks, they hurt though. They pushed me back a little bit, like, you know, that, and it put me in a position where I was like, oh man, you know, you, you do so much for so many people over the years that you think that when you strive to do your own thing, people would be happy for you. But in a, that tall poppy syndrome is 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 very relevant in Brisbane. It's very relevant in Queensland. You know what I mean? Um, people always like to know what everyone else is doing when they should just be concentrating on what they're doing. Because yeah. the more time you spend worrying about how the next guy's business is going is the least time you realise that your business is going to shit. Yeah, 100%. Good to have um, very tough skin, whether it's in business or just in law in general. And, um, and, but you go hand in hand nowadays, you know what I mean? Yeah. A lot of lawyers just love being lawyers and just want to go to work every day and pump out work. And they're the best lawyers. I've got some phenomenal lawyers that work for me that are just lawyers and they're very good lawyers. They don't want to muck. They don't want to generate work. They don't want to be a part of the business. Then I have a couple of young lawyers who are so, they remind me of me 10 or 15 years ago that are just hungry, love the business, love all that sort of stuff. But as I teach them, you've got to have thick skin in, in, in any business because people, People aren't always happy for your success. People don't want, you know, it's a competitive world. And unfortunately, the more success that you have and the bigger that you get, the more people want to see you fail. So, you know what I mean? And you're going to have setbacks. You're going to have really shitty weeks, really shitty days where you think, is it all worth it? Or is it all, you know, like all this stress? I could just go and work for someone or I could go lay on a beach and sell surfboards. You know, like, is it worth it all? <clears throat> and then you realize it is because there's certain things that you're good at. And if you stopped, would you be happy? Would you really be happy with the business? Like you, with you as a person. So, you know, I mean, I guess it's just, you've got to take the setbacks. The setbacks are what make you stronger and make you push harder to do better, I guess. Oh, I a hundred percent agree with that. I literally started applying for jobs when I did my PLT and just as I started applying, um, COVID hit. So just been oh, in the yeah. waiting process and at the moment. It's, and then that's the thing, like, we don't know the full impact of COVID, you know, I mean, like COVID is here now yeah. and it's still here. Victoria's going through it again and it's going to be hard for young guys like you who, who just like just finished. And I remember what it was like, you know, when you, when you get admitted, if you didn't have a job, fuck, it's going to be super hard getting a job. And that was me. That was me 15, 20 years ago. If you fast forward now, there's so many more lawyers, so much more competition in the market. Um, it's less of a boys club these days. It's not, you know, like it's, you might know someone, but they can't get you in. You know, those sort of things have changed where competition's fierce, but then you throw COVID in and it's like, shit, there's big firms like Gaydens and, and McKinnis and, and interstate firms where they're sacking half their staff and put, only bringing fee earners in and everyone's working from home. These are big commercial firms because their clients aren't doing anything. They've got to wait to see what their clients are doing. You know what I mean? So there's so much now where if you're a, if you're a junior lawyer in a firm, you'd be worried about your job. You know what I mean? Once JobKeeper finishes for a lot of firms, they're going to go broke. Once the ATO starts suing people again, they're going to go broke. So there's a lot of things that, that I think a lot of people are, 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 should be worried about, but it's going to be hard no matter what. No matter who you are, no matter what business you have, the whole world's in the same position. Yeah. We've all just got to try and you know, get through it. Yeah, that's I completely agree. It's just yeah, we've got to take it as it comes, I guess. Yeah. Um, but I guess that's another reason why I started this podcast was obviously to share everyone's advice with those coming through and those wanting to learn, but also um, a different way to put my name out there because you know I've sent out hundreds of resumes, but 
you know, it's a piece of paper. There's no face to the paper. And I guess by doing this, it kind of um, puts myself out there. And I get oh, to... Mate, I think that's, uh, mate. And look, I, I, I get asked to do podcast, no shit, like at least twice a week. Yeah. Like, you know, um, whether it be, you know, business podcast, uh, uh, social ones or, or, or lawyer ones. And very rarely do I do them only because <clears throat> it's just you know, certain people are only, they're doing it for either they, they, it's their business or they're trying to pump some, they're trying to plug something or, but mate, I commend you on doing this. This is good because being creative in a, in a, such a, a, a world where everyone steals everyone else's ideas is hard to be, to step outside the box and do something that no one else is doing. And if you're just getting out there and going, look, <clears throat> do you want to jump on and do a podcast with me um, purely because I want to just pick your brain and get it out there. Mate, people will do it and you'll learn a lot from this. You'll learn a lot from business. You'll learn a lot. You might take one thing that I say and go, fuck, that resonates with me. It worked. But 99% of what I might, might say, you go, well, it doesn't apply to me. But being creative, and that's the biggest thing. That's where I've always, if you step out your side your box and, and give people something where they actually take notice of you, it's going to be good or it can be bad. Like there's an old <coughs> Japanese proverb that says, the nail that sticks out catches the jeans, right? But that nail needs to be hammered. So, so you might catch people on jeans and people might take a pick to, like, notice of you and that's all you need. But then there'll be other people that are going, mate, this guy's just, you need a hammer and down, you need to get rid of that nail because it's catching too many jeans. That sort of problem is just true in life. You're going to do things that people are going to love and go, this guy's just caught my attention. I love it. And then people are going to go, mate, this guy needs to go away. And that's the thing. But at least then everyone notices you. Doesn't matter whether it's good or bad. It's people still notice you, and they still take it, to make it, to take the attention. Because there's might be five hundred blokes just like you, but they're not doing what you're doing. Where you're the one who's going to stand out now, and within three to six months, you'll probably be in your dream job. Yeah, well, that would be nice. But um, at the same time, it's also, I guess, because obviously the people I speak to have got you know years of advice to give and. Obviously, I'm happy to share that with anyone who's interested in the law and who wants to, yeah. you know, get on board and wants a bit of extra advice. Um, with yeah. that being said, probably just one final thing is what advice would you give to someone wanting to take up a legal career? Um, <laughs> well, but I just had a little, I just had another little son and he's, and I always think, I think, what advice would I be? So I was like, don't be a lawyer. No, but, but, um, but I love what I do, I guess. The best thing about if you want to be a lawyer or you want to take up the legal profession, um, do something that you really, really do enjoy. Like if if you're a if you're a backroom loves contracts, loves like the itty gritty bullshit that people just fight over, then do that. If you love emotional, emotional and family law and all that stuff that comes, do that. Like for myself, PI, I love helping people. I love trying to help people get a better start in life after a really shitty, catastrophic thing that's happened to them. That's the biggest thing you can do. If you can help, I love helping people. If I can do that, then that's, I feel happy. I actually go home at night and love what I do. But, you know, I have really shitty days too where I go, fuck, why am I still a lawyer? Like this shit is just frustrating. But the best advice is you need to love what you do. Like if you, if, if you start, I know mates that have started law that finished like straight sevens at uni with me. They're not lawyers now. They, they would have been phenomenal commercial lawyers. They would have been phenomenal judges. They would have been phenomenal everything. But they just hated law. They just realised it wasn't for them. They're now doing other things. Like one guy's in England as like, like head of a PR company, like just the complete opposite. So you'll realise very quickly what your passion is. But you have to have the passion. You want to enjoy it. You want to be able to go home at night happy. Don't if you're going home every night and you're shitty or you're working till midnight, you hate your boss, you kick the dog when you get home. You know, you need to work maybe something that's just something different for you. But as long as the passion's in it, that's the best advice I can give you. You've got to have passion. Once you lose the passion, change your career. Yeah, you're not that's... doing anyone you're not doing anyone any justice. You're not helping anyone. If you don't like your job and you don't like yourself. Go do something else because you're just gonna you're gonna hurt the next person, next client that comes in the door. You're not doing them justice. Oh, 100 percent. That's I agree with that. You've got to enjoy it, or it's just not worth doing. I, that's it. That's it, Damon. All right. Um, well, that's all I have. Um, thank you very much for your time and joining My me. Pleasure. On
And mate, look, if I, if you have anything, reach out to me. I'm sure I know some people that know some people that know some people that get you a job. So give me a, give me a call if you need anything, mate. You got my details now. No worries. Thanks, mate. Hi, right, Dan. See you, buddy. Take care.